Hello and welcome to another Try Tutors video. In today's video we're going to be analysing the poem The Child Who Was Shot Dead by Soldiers in the Younger by Ingrid Yoker. Some background on the poem. This is a South African poem that is set during the apartheid era. It was originally written in Afrikaans and it has been translated into English. It is a protest poem, so the genre of the poem is a protest poem, because it was written in response to the Sharpeville Massacre of 1960. The background for this poem is particularly important, so be aware of the South African context with regard to apartheid and to past laws before reading this poem. Our poet is Ingrid Jonker. She lived between 1933 and 1965. She was affiliated with a group of anti-establishment writers. They were writing against the conventions of the time. She was condemned by her father. He was a National Party member of parliament. She lived a troubled life and she died by suicide at the age of 31. Nelson Mandela actually read one of her poems in his inaugural State of the Nation address in 1994. So let's have a look at the title. So this is obviously my interpretation of the poem. You can have different interpretations. The important thing with poetry is if you have an interpretation of what the word means or what the connotations are of a particular sentence, um, then it's just important to back up your interpretation with evidence. So I'm gonna try and show you how I've analyzed it and how there is evidence um, for my interpretation. So I also have a lot of differing interpretations as I read it through. I was like, this can be read in this way or it can be read in that way or the other way. Um, so consider those different alternatives and figure out which one you can prove um, in a more structured answer in a more cohesive way. So if we look at the title, the child who was shot dead by soldiers in Yanga, so the is a definite article um, and that can indicate the significance of this particular child because this child is going to be a symbol, it's going to be a metaphor, it's going to be an inspiring force. Child is significant because of the connotations. The word child has connotations of innocent, harmless, playful, naive, ignorant, who was shot dead this shows us how fatal this shooting was by soldiers. If we look at soldiers, firstly it's plural, which um, is important because we have a singular child who has been shot dead by many soldiers. And if we think about the connotations of child and then we think about the connotations of soldiers and the fact that they're plural, this makes the crime all the more problematic and upsetting and horrific. So what are the connotations of soldiers? Soldiers are trained fighters. They stop evil forces, which also it raises the question, why are the this, this soldier and the child even interacting? Why is there this fatal event? Because a child cannot be evil, right? A child cannot actually do something so wrong that soldiers would warrant this sort of behavior. In the younger, this is going to give us um, in the setting, a hint of the setting, Nyanga is a township in the Western Cape and so we can understand that this is a poem about the apartheid era and about the horrific events that happened in the townships. The title is quite interesting as well because it seems like a statement of fact, there's a sort of lack of emotion. Yes, we are analysing the connotations of the words but there's no sort of big adjectives in there or um, you know emotive language um, and so it's quite an interesting thing to think about, perhaps as pointing to the frequency of this event taking place under the apartheid regime. Um, and so it's almost like there's this desensitization to it, which is incredibly concerning and worrying and sad and upsetting. Moving on to stanza one. Stanza one. The child is not dead. The child raises his fist against his mother, who screams Africa, screams the smell of freedom and heather, in the locations of the heart and the siege. So the first line over there, the child is not dead. This is an immediate contradiction of the title. So it's quite shocking because we've come to realize from the title that the child is dead. And now we have a complete contradiction that now the child is not dead. And so this is we're going to discuss later on in terms of the child being physically dead, but spiritually being this force of inspiration. Um, so that immediate contradiction immediately draws us into the poem. 
Also notice that the child and the child on the first and second line is repeated. This is called anaphora. Anaphora is the repetition of a word or phrase at the start of subsequent lines. And this anaphora in particular emphasizes the importance of the child and how the child is the root of the future struggle. It's also can be seen as a you know a mourning cry of pain or a spirited cry of resistance often repetition is a feature of that the child raises his fists against his mother so here we have this lifting of the fists in a defiant manner if we think about the connotations of fists it's about fighting it's about anger it's about resistance we're going to come back to why he's raising his fist against his mother in the next stanza and we will chat about it together with that line where he raises his fist against his father who screams Africa, screams the smell of freedom and heather. So notice over here um, the repetition, which is going to be repeated later on as well. So the use of screams and the repetition of screams emphasizes the anguish which permeates South Africa, emphasizes the anguish of the protest and of how um, the anti-resistant, oh, sorry, the anti-apartheid resistors um, are desperate for freedom and um, are fighting intensely for it. Um, and are experiencing pain and sacrifice as a result of the struggle. The use of Africa is also significant, you know, not just South Africa, um, and it invokes the struggle of the entire continent. This is a poem written in the 1960s, and so if you're familiar with African history in the 1960s, this will make a lot of sense as well. So it, it invokes the struggle of the entire continent. Screams the smell. So this use of smell is really significant whenever we have the use of the senses it makes the situation more real immersive and resonant for the actual reader also the phrase you know the smell of freedom um, is quite a common expression and it sort of implies that freedom is imminent that freedom is coming notice the enjambment here and we're going to discuss this more towards the end of the video when we talk about the structure of the poem but here it's very noticeable, smell of freedom and heather. So notice the lack of punctuation, notice the run on lines. Heather, some versions even use felt because heather is felt, the South African landscape once again giving us context and setting. In the locations of the heart and the siege. So notice um, that we have location is plural, locations, and this indicates that many places feel the oppression um, of the apartheid regime. So it's not just one location, it's not just in Nyanga. This um, event has um, opened up wounds perhaps in many other places because so many places have been struggling under siege. So under siege means, um, you know, when an army or when a city is under siege, it means the opposing army has surrounded them. So there's no access to the outside world. So this military strategy is effective because um, the people inside will eventually run out of food and water and supplies and things like that. So under siege in this case means oppressed, restricted and cut off. And so if you think about um, what the apartheid government tried to do to African people, um, this really matches up. They try to restrict them and oppress them. Um, notice the use of heart. So the locations of the heart under siege. This is an example of synecdoche. So synecdoche is when a part represents a whole or a whole represents a part. And so in this case, um, using the heart, we know that it's not just the heart that's being oppressed, right? We know it's actually the entire being, the entire person that's being oppressed. Um, but the use of heart emphasizes the emotion that is felt as a result of this, uh, as a result of this oppression. Moving on to stanza two. The child raises his fists against his father in the march of the generations who scream Africa, scream the smell of justice and blood in the streets of his armed pride. So the child over here, we're seeing that this is a, the child is a symbol. It is a metaphor for the spirit of freedom. Raises his fists against his father. Notice the alliteration, fists father. This emphasizes the fighting spirit. So I said I was gonna talk about raising his fists against his mother and father together. So there are a couple of interpretations that I think could work over here. Um, and you can obviously select the one that you find to be the most convincing. So, and also what your teacher has, has mentioned to you. So firstly, if we think of mother and father are typically figures associated with the protection and care of a child, as it is their duty to 
look out and to shield, um, to shield and look out for their children. The fact that the child resists them can show how the being who is responsible for caring for its people, which is the country of South Africa, is actually the force oppressing them. It is a somewhat unnatural image. So that interpretation, you can see it as the child being representative, representative of the people oppressed under the apartheid government, and they are resisting their own country, which is supposed to protect them. Just like a mother and father are supposed to protect the child, in this case, South Africa is not actually protecting its own people and they have to resist. Another interpretation, this could also refer to the change in anti-apartheid resistance strategy. The child, who perhaps represents the youth, is changing the way the struggle will proceed. And so this makes sense in context because the Sharpo massacre occurred in 1960. The Sharpo massacre was started off as a peaceful protest against past laws and ended in extreme violence with many people um, being killed by police forces and many keep people injured as well. And in 1961, the armed wing of the ANC, MK, was launched. And this marked a distinct change in terms of how the anti-apartheid struggle was going to unfold because beforehand it was more non-violent resistance and now there was a more aggressive approach. And so the child raising his fist against his mother and father can be representative of how the strategy towards a party resistance is changing and it's going to become more aggressive than previous generations or perhaps it could be as um you know parents mourn the death of a child and this child is saying don't just mourn me don't just cry or rather fight against what killed me rather fight against these evil forces so different interpretation is there take with that what you use with that what you will in the march of the generations so this is also one that you can understand in different ways um so it can be linked to this mother and father thing that we spoke about that there is a difference in the generations in terms of how they're fighting but also i think it could refer to that all different people are uniting to resist because if you think about the shop for massacre that was men women and children being shot at the police um, we're shooting at everyone and so it's the march of the generations this affects so many people and they all are uniting to resist who scream Africa scream the smell of justice and blood notice the repetition um, think about blood and blood can symbolize anger and pain and it can also symbolize sacrifice and so this can signify the many sacrifices and the horrific consequences that were endured as a result of resisting the apartheid regime in the streets of his armed pride so this is um, a really interesting line um, so if we think about it um, i think it makes the most sense to the armed pride being the anti-apartheid fighters because it's talking about the child so it's in his armed pride um, so these are the anti-apartheid fighters who are armed what are they armed with a fighting and determined spirit as a result of this child's death it's haunting them and it's motivating them to fight against apartheid and pride they have this intense belief in their cause and if you think about um the word pride you think about the collective noun for lions right a pride of lions and so this is incredibly effective because um if you think about lions lions are powerful they're you know confident um so you're comparing you're having this sort of um how would you say it um it's not a direct comparison but the use of this word is really clever because they have a pride they have a belief in their cause but you can also understand the strength of that word that em emulates the strength of the anti-apartheid fighters. Stanza three. The child is not dead, neither at Langa nor at Nyanga, nor at Orlando nor at Sharpville, nor at the police station in Philippi, where he lies with a bullet in his head. Notice all the negatives in this stanza. We have not, neither, nor, 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 nor. And this is really significant um, because it links to the listing of the townships. So we have a whole list of different townships here where all atrocities transpired. Um, and this list of townships where innocent children were killed and where the black, where black pride and the African spirit was oppressed, um, this is 
it, the what, oh sorry the reason why it's listed like this um, is it's to emphasize how the apartheid regime tried to extend tried extensively to subjugate Africans to oppression but also the repetition of all these different no's and nor's and even the listing of the townships can emphasize that Africans rose up countless times to resist. It's an idea that the spirit of freedom cannot be suppressed. And if you think about what a township symbolizes, um, a township is was in, created and it was intended to isolate Africans and to crush the African spirit. And so by having all these negatives and showing that what the intention of the townships actually um, has been overruled and that the anti-apartheid resistors have come on top of that and they have resisted that and they have not stood for that. Um, the child is not dead, that first line, repetition, once again for emphasis. And this is really going to bring up this idea of physical death and sort of spiritual death. So the child is physically dead and that is reinforced with the last line of the stanza that he has a bullet in his head. But he lives on in the spiritual sense. He is inspiring the fight for justice. Um, if you notice the mention of Sharpeville, this is an allusion. So this is a sort of technical term that we can use, an allusion, which is a reference to the Sharpeville massacre of 1960. And if we look at the last line, the last line can be seen or can be classified as a paradox because it is a contrast with the first line of the stanza. You've literally said the child is not dead and then it says he's lying with a bullet in his head. And this is an incredibly brutal description, um, but it emphasizes that the child is maybe physically dead, but his spirit will live on. The desire or spirit for freedom cannot be killed by bullets. It is something that is so strong um, and so... You know, it's never going to actually die until it, freedom is realized. Stanza four. The child is the shadow of the soldiers on guard with guns, sarakans and batons. The child is present at all meetings and legislations. The child peeps through the windows of houses and into the hearts of mothers. The child who just wanted to play in the sun at the younger is everywhere. The child who became a man treks through all of Africa. The child who became a giant travels through the whole world. So a really impactful stanza over here. The child is the shadow of the soldiers. This is a metaphor. It's a direct comparison. Um, and I think you can see this in different ways. So firstly, you can see it perhaps as the child has become a soldier in terms of he will fight violently for a cause and he is inspiring this fight. The shadow could also show how the soldier is perhaps haunted by the killing of the innocent child or this sort of shadow hangs over the apartheid government. It's like they have the capacity or they have been killing children um, and that's definitely a shadow, a dark um, presence in their life or um, in, the, in the legacy. On guard with guns, sarakans and batons. So these are all um, objects associated with apartheid guns obviously then armored cars or tanks and if you think about those terrible images of um of the apartheid regime the armored cars and tanks were there to protect the soldier they were not to protect the child um it seems like the apartheid regime were preparing to fight terrorists with trained armies and military forces but it was actually peaceful protesters and in this case it was a child so all listing of all these different weapons really indicates um, the horrific nature of this of this crime the child is present at all meetings and legislations so um, this is quite interesting because it's not specific in terms of is this the meetings of the resistance movement, is this a party government meetings. I think in terms of shadow, perhaps it could indicate this child's shadow hangs over any sort of legislation that the party government is passing, but also that this child's memory informs the resistance meetings, resistance meetings, and um, the child's legacy has um, inspired the resistors to, um, you know, to take up the um to take up forces to fight the brutality that they are up against to engage in serious war it's almost like the child um has inspired this resistance moving on to the last four lines of this stanza you'll notice the anaphora once again 
Um, the child and what he represents has an abundance of influence and permeates every individual and aspect of life and destiny. So this is really emphatic. The child peeps through the windows of houses and into the hearts of mothers. The child never dies, he never goes away. He's peeping, he's looking, he is inspiring. Um, if you think about a window and what a window can represent, a window is once again that spirit of resistance. This child or the anti-apartheid movement, or the child as an embodiment of the anti-apartheid movement keeps finding opportunity to grow, thrive and conquer um, and involve every person in the struggle and into the hearts of mothers. So this repetition of heart and if you think about heart, it's on such a deep level. Um, so what the child represents is featured on such a deep level. It cannot be let go. It's the spirit of resistance. It's within people's hearts. It cannot, it's not something that can be oppressed or taken away without a fight. The child who just wanted to play in the sun at the younger is everywhere. I think that is maybe the um, most poignant line of this, of this poem because um, you know, it's really quite, it makes the crime all the more upsetting that his only crime, in inverted commas, is wanting to just play in the sun. So it's such a innocent thing that he wanted to do. All he wanted was to play. And um, this really em emphasizes how the protesters are not fighting for privileges or not fighting for anything bizarre. They are fighting for basic rights. It's just about actually for kids being able to play in the sun. The child who became a man treks through all of Africa. So the child, unfortunately, was not able to become a man in the physical sense, right? He wasn't able to grow up, he was killed. But what he represents has transformed and developed and grown. If you think about um, the word treks and the connotations of treks, it's a struggle. You know, if you trek up a mountain, it's, it's something that you struggle through, right? It's not like you're taking a leisurely walk, but Trex represents this persistence and this perseverance through all of Africa, once again, alluding to the struggles of the entire continent and to the united spirit of Africans under oppression and this fight against that oppression. His spirit has also grown to inspire the entire continent and in the next line has grown to inspire the entire world. Um, the child who became a giant travels through the whole world. So obviously this is figurative. It's not literally, he doesn't literally become a giant figuratively, he does. And he travels throughout the world. He navigates to change the world, to beat the oppression around the world, to inspire the world to resist apartheid and to inspire the world to keep fighting for what's right. So it even goes above and beyond um, you know, just having resistance within South Africa, this child is inspiring and this horrific event inspires the entire world to view apartheid differently and um, to, you know, um, to put measures in place to fight against this oppressive system and to fight for what is right. And then the last stanza, which is, maybe I take it back, this is also a really, um, poignant line and it makes up the entire stanza which really emphasizes the importance of it and emphasizes its irony without a pass so one line stand is isolated it emphasizes the line and it emphasizes the non-conformity to restriction and oppression the irony is evident the protesters and the protest itself is unbounded and unlimited by apartheid measures it inspires and roams free. The spirit of resistance is unyielding, defiant and strong. The Shabba massacre was about past laws and this event inspired the poem. And so the fact that it ends with the spirit of resistance and freedom and this child's legacy can roam free without a pass is very significant. And it's ironic because as much as the apartheid government tried to curtail freedom and try to limit and isolate African people, actually there is the spirit of freedom and spirit of resistance that can never be bounded, can never be limited. So we spoke about the structure and notice over here we have no punctuation, even at the end of this poem. And throughout the poem we have enjambment, there's limited punctuation, actually there's no punctuation really. 
and this is effective because this is an unresolved issue that continues to haunt South Africa. So there's no sense of closure. There's no full stop. Okay, now you know. Now there's been success, and yes, there's been success, but this. Um, this legacy of the child's death continues to haunt South Africa and continues to be an unresolved issue. So let's analyze some key features of the poem as a whole. In terms of the structure, it's a free verse poem. The rhythm of the poem reinforces the heightened spirit of protest and anger. The enjambment represents the momentum of the struggle against apartheid is uncontrollable. It cannot be stopped and it mimics the freedom the, fe the people are fighting for. There is the sense of freedom and um, unconventional uh, lack of restriction that is present in the writing which emulates and mimics the freedom that the people, that the anti-apartheid resistors are fighting for. They don't want to be contained and bound and limited by these measures. There's no punctuation, once again, going against convention. This movement will not be contained or stopped. This is an issue, or this is the spirit of freedom will just continue to thrive and move. Also notice the refrain of the child at the start of each stanza. This emphasizes how the child and the memory of the child are integral and central to the resistance movement. The tone of the poem, I've got quite a few words here. Remember, tone is the attitude of the writer or the poet or the speaker and so we always have to use an adjective it's passionate determined inspired confident reflective contemplative hopeful optimistic at times it can be forceful as well the mood of the poem is hopeful in awe inspiring or inspired even nationalistic the themes um, violence oppression brutality, resistance, strength, and the imagery reinforces all these themes. The purpose or the message of the poem is to showcase the strength of the anti-apartheid movement, to show how brutal apartheid was, to indicate the enduring violence on the spirit of freedom of resistance, and ultimately to show us that brutality and violence results in the opposite of subjugation, and ultimately this poem condemns the apartheid regime. I hope that you found that video helpful. Please like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next video.